Hi, this is Barbara. And this is Mark. And welcome back to Wiki Design. Today we want to talk about a few things that we think WordPress can improve upon. These are things that kind of annoy us when we're designing and developing websites for clients. The first thing is the media library. If you have been using WordPress for a little while, you might wonder where are certain things in the media library? Like, can I create a folder or subfolders? <laughs> The answer is no. <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty confusing. And if you have a smaller site, this probably isn't that big of a deal because you don't have to upload as many images. But when you start getting into e-commerce or membership sites, this can become a really big problem. Just think about it. If you have a hundred products and multiple photos for each of those products, that's a lot of images. It would be nice if WordPress had a system to make this a little more organized, but they don't. Yeah, so what you have to do is install an additional plugin. Uh, the one we recommend is called Happy Files. And this is a very lightweight plugin. It's a great developer who makes it. And it's going to give you the ability to actually add folders and subfolders. It's going to make it really easy to organize your files in your media library. Yeah. And we'll make sure that we link all the plugins and anything that we talk about in the description down below so you can check out all of these things that we mention. The second thing that we wish WordPress would improve upon is their dashboard. When you log into your WordPress site, you're taken to a dashboard that doesn't really have any useful information, in my opinion. I think that having news and updates about WordCamps that are coming to the area really isn't useful at all. Yeah. I don't understand why they include that as like the main feature in the WordPress dashboard. I think that they could really improve it and have some information and links about things that you actually want to do on your website, like yeah. update posts or pages. Yeah, and if you notice, if you start to install plugins on your website, certain plugins are then going to inject their own panels onto here, which they think might be useful for you. But in a lot of cases, they're probably not going to be useful either. So you might not know this, but you can, install a plugin and actually customize this 100% to your liking. So we have a video uh, right here, I'll leave up in the card here and in, in the description below. This is gonna show you how you can create your own custom um, Elementor page and then add that to your dashboard. So you can add, like she said, if you know you're gonna create posts all the time or you know, you can pretty much add anything to this dashboard, yeah. anything that you can add anything to Elementor. Anything that would make your life easier, easier yes. you can add there. And that's what we like to do when we create websites for our clients is we put the things that we know that they're going to access mm -hmm. the most in the dashboard. So they just log in, they can see a link to go to their posts, their pages to manage their WooCommerce or whatever it a is. Contact form, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it just makes things a lot easier for them. And I wish that WordPress would give us the ability to customize our dashboard to our liking, but that hasn't happened just yet. The next one is there's no easy way to add your Google Analytics tracking code to your WordPress website. You would think that this could be a, an easy functionality that, you know, WordPress can add, but as of now, there's no way to add this unless you add custom code to your theme or you have an, an additional plugin. So yeah, and everybody pretty much wants to have Google Analytics installed on their website. Mm -hmm. I never have come across anybody that didn't want to know how many visitors they're getting and get all that information. So it'd be nice if WordPress maybe added this to their settings where you could just install the code really easily, yeah. but it hasn't happened I don't yet. think it ever will, in my opinion. So a lot of times you have to add your Google Analytics tracking code to an SEO plugin that you have installed, or they might have uh, standalone plugins just for this. But what we recommend is installing a plugin actually called Code Snippets. And what this is going to do is give you the ability to add that code to your website and it's going to give you the ability to add any future code that you need to your website. So Yeah, because you might not just have Google Analytics code that you need to install. Maybe it's Facebook Pixel or mm -hmm. Pinterest tracking, different things that you want to track on your site. Or just if you want to do some like custom functionality and you don't want to edit your theme files, this is yeah. a really good solution. So and we'll it recommend. cuts down on a more additional plugins. So mm -hmm. this is the one we install on our websites and our client websites called Code Snippets. The next thing that we think WordPress can improve upon is their revisions history. If you 
are not really familiar with WordPress, you might not even know that this tab exists because it's kind of hidden. For whatever reason, they don't have this on posts or pages when you're editing automatically. Sometimes you have to go to your screen options to actually enable this section on the page. And this is a pretty big thing in my opinion, because if you make a mistake, it's always nice to know that you can go back. But if you're not mm -hmm. familiar with this tab, you probably wouldn't even know it existed. Yeah, and what we recommend on top of that is, the problem is that WordPress by default has unlimited revisions saved to your database. So what that means is, let's say you edit a page 1,000 times, that amount of revisions is gonna get added to your database, and so it's gonna make your database bigger. The bigger the database, the potential it is to actually slow down your website on the back end, especially, and maybe even on the front end. So there's a plugin called WP Revisions Control. And what this does is it gives you the ability to control how many revisions each page or post or anything like that is gonna have to the database. Uh, I recommend in most cases, probably five to 10 is fine because you don't need to go back revisions from six months ago, a long time ago, if you you know have a lot of revisions. So this is the plugin we recommend and it's gonna make your life a lot easier to try to manage the back end. Okay, and we saved the best one for last, and that is Gutenberg, or what they're calling full site editing these days. <laughs> uh, we what can we say yes. about Gutenberg? If you have tried to use it, you probably are just as frustrated as we are with how this is working. It's it's been in development for several years, and they really, in my opinion, haven't made that much progress, and it's just not getting any better. No, so we'll give you a little uh, background on how we learned about it and you know when it started. So we were at the work camp back in Nashville in 2017. And that was a big year because that was the year that Matt Mullenweg got up on State of the Word and basically announced that this is the start of Gutenberg and that you better go all in on Gutenberg or you're gonna be left behind. Fast forward to where we are now, what are we in? April of 2022 yeah. and I am going to just call it what it is. I think this is a complete disaster. It was executed very poorly. Uh, it hasn't progressed nearly as fast as it should have in that amount of years. Um, and it's just not easy to use. No. Like I couldn't imagine handing off a website to one of our clients that is not familiar with WordPress and say, edit your pages in Gutenberg. They wouldn't have the foggiest idea of where to even start because when you go to a page that's built you know, with Gutenberg, it's very confusing. It, the interface is not intuitive at all. You really don't know where to click, what buttons do what. It's just kind of a mess. Yeah. It's usually, what it comes down to is the interface on the back end is very complicated and it's not, it's not good. Like it's as simple yeah. as that. It makes it very hard. Even for us, we're extremely experienced designers and developers and we get confused. So yeah. we know if we hand this off, it's just gonna be a mess. Yeah, and, and WordPress honestly has never been good with their interface design. I think since the start, it's had a poor interface and it hasn't really been improved, but Gutenberg just really takes that poor design to the next level. Like I could never imagine just saying, Edit your site. Tell me what to do. People would be like, I have no idea. I don't yeah. know where to go. What do, what do I do? And a big one, too, is now that I think about it, the documentation is very poor, too. So yeah. they're, they're, you can't design web pages that look pretty good in Gutenberg, yes. But where's like the good documentation? Because um, if you aren't familiar, the Gutenberg project, um, it's a lot of volunteer based. So they're not they don't have an incentive to create and develop the documentation, you know, the stuff yeah. that actually makes a product good. Right. Um, so the good news is, let's talk about the good news. As you know, on this channel, we use the Elementor page builder. Uh, this is currently used by, what, over 10 million people. So yeah. it's a very popular page builder. There's a huge demand for an easy way to make pages, which is why we use the Elementor page builder. Yeah, and I think what Gutenberg lacks, Elementor really makes up for. They have way more widgets, way more functionality, and their interface is a lot easier to use. So mm -hmm. maybe Gutenberg team needs to take a look at some of the things that Elementor and these other page builders are doing and incorporate those elements into the design of Gutenberg. Let us know what you think about this list. Do you agree with the things that we mentioned that we 
think WordPress can improve upon. And if there's anything that you don't like about WordPress, leave a comment down below because we'd love to hear what you have to say. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel because we upload new videos here every week and we'll see you next time. Bye.